welcome to Life of Us, my first video blog or vlog on board gaming. And today I will be reviewing Tomb of Annihilation, the game that has been on my pull list for quite some time. This being the fifth game in the Dungeons and Dragons board gaming series. The others, obviously, which I already have, as you can see at the back, Castle Ravenloft, Legend of Drizzt, Wrath of the Shardland. I don't have Temple of Elemental Evil, but I gave that one a miss because this one was definitely on my pull list. and something that I'm very excited to review and look at. So without further ado, let's look inside the box. Okay, so I've got, done the unboxing, I've got all of the components laid out in front of me, all of the figurines, there's some cardboard that needs to be punched out, which I'll get to in a minute, but let's quickly just look at this awesome box art. It's full cover artwork, definitely more 5e-ish than the previous games, which were 4e, uh, I quite like it, we've got the Dungeons and Dragons logo, we've got the designer's name, interestingly enough, in the bottom right corner, which wasn't there previously. We've got a jungle type setting, a monster, serpent monster with a flaming sword, some reptilian creatures at the back. Obviously, the whole Tomb of Annihilation takes place within the jungles of Chalt, so it's a very jungle type setting. So let's quickly just look at some of the other components. One of the nice things they've included is this sort of... Uh, Tomb of Annihilation uh, reference guide for the monsters, which gives you a sort of a, which gives you a better understanding of what you'll be facing as you go through these jungles, and we'll get to that as well when we look at the miniatures themselves. But let's quickly just look at the rule books. The rule books are a lot different from what we had previously, and I think again definitely a step up from what was previously there. If I just look at the previous rule book we had, this is the previous rule book from. Uh, Castle Ravenloft, still not too bad. I kind of got going quite fond of the artwork and the style. Um, but then again, I'm fond of all of the Dungeons and Dragons board games. But this one is definitely a lot more different, including the adventure book, which now includes full cover art. The previous adventure books, if I look at them quickly, were, yeah. Yeah, if you compare those two, it's definitely a step in the right direction. We've got a, looks like the druid riding a reptilian beast being chased by another reptilian monster. Really cool. And full color. I'm not going to spoil anything, but really, really fantastic. Um, and the rule book itself as well. Very well done. Um, now let's look at some of the other components. We'll look at the cards in a moment. But let's have a look at the monsters and the heroes. Okay, arguably the most impressive piece in this whole set is this really strange looking vehicle, which is called the Stone Juggernaut, which shows up in one of the adventures. It's covered in all sorts of ruins. It'll be a fantastic set piece to paint, but then I've never really painted any of my minis, so I wouldn't really know, but I'm pretty sure it would look really good painted. That said, there is a pre-painted version of the Tomb of Annihilation set which you can purchase from WizKids. I just went with the obviously cheaper option because I don't paint my minis, although I really should. Um, we'll look at the villains, which are these guys at the back here. These are really big gorilla type creature um, yeah he looks pretty mean gorilla god from the flash springs to mind then we've got our serpent with a flaming sword from the cover art that we just saw uh, we've got these pterodactyl bird like creatures uh, there's two of them um, we've got tiny little Let's see if I can zoom in on him a bit. Uh, tiny little pygmy chief. 
Uh, but then again, it's not really the size that matters as Yoda says. Um, we've got a sources as well. Um, we've got a... Okay, so let's get to my only gripe about the components in this whole set is that um, a lot of the components in the set that I got were bent slightly backwards so I'm gonna have to use some hot water to bend them back to what they were. My other gripe is that this villain is known as the four-armed gargoyle but as you can see it's missing an arm so I'm stuck with a three-armed gargoyle. I did do a search for the packaging but somehow uh, en route to my location this gargoyle managed to lose his arm and he's rather pissed off about it but if WizKids is listening to this and they happen to have a spare arm and I don't have to send this poor gargoyle to surgery, then please send it my way. It would be really appreciated. Okay, that said, the most impressive villain in the entire D&D series for me has always been this Demilich, Akachisarak. Or, well, I could never say his name properly. Akisarak, Achisarak, Aki saying Akachisarak. Um, I remember some of the Tomb of Horrors stuff that I picked up in the 80s, just reading through them. He always seemed as like the epitome of evil. And then I remember at the time watching um, The Temple of Doom, which is the Indiana Jones movie, and thinking that the Moram character kind of resembled him. So I've always pictured this Akachisarak fellow having a slightly Indian accent for some odd reason or another. But he's always been like the titular D and D villain, very evil and very fond of traps, which means this game's gonna have lots of them. Right, let's move on to the monsters in the game. And again, little tiny little pygmy warrior monster types. Obviously, it's a jungle, so we'd expect that from them. And then these little weird bear-like creatures, which if I just come look at the reference sheet, they are called Zorbos. Although they look cute and cuddly they probably are pretty damn mean and then obviously you've got to have velociraptors because who wouldn't want uh, to have a raptor in a jungle uh, remind me of the hunting drakes that we encountered in the uh, legend of drizzt but a little bit smaller than that um up also there are some reptilian type creatures over here uh let's see what these are called they are Yuan T Brood God. And then we have these Sioux monsters at the back of here. And then these guys over here are fire newts. So lots of lizard folk in this game. And then right at the back of here are these skeleton type creatures and zombie skeletons. Which is kind of weird because I thought skeletons were dead anyway. But again, the, this slight problem that I have with the components in this game. Yeah, so my only gripe again is that this skeleton over here looks like he's doing the limbo. Uh, again, I'll need some hot water just to straighten him up without damaging him somewhat. Um, but definitely good, overall good quality components. Well, even with my gargoyle missing his arm. Let's look at the heroes quickly. Um, got a ranger. We've got a bard, is it a Baxi bard? Yes. I've got a Saurian paladin, um, a druid character, and then this really impressive wizard, which if I consult the reference is a Arkakra wizard by the name of Ashara. So, some really cool, interesting characters and heroes to play with in this game. Um, let's look at some of the artwork on the cards itself. Yes, Bard, Druid, Paladin, Wizard, uh, Ranger. They are the monster encounter and treasure decks, which are standard. And then included in this are, is a trap deck, which makes sense because Akachisarak is obviously behind the whole Tomb of Annihilation, so we can expect lots of will be lots of traps, of course, and then we have some spells, which is new. I'm assuming this is probably for 
one of the heroes, an additional spell deck, uh, putting of winter, which I've not like, looks like some additional spells, again, probably for one of the heroes, my guess is probably the paladin or the druid or even the ranger maybe, or the wizard perhaps, um, but yeah, the card quality and card stock looks very interesting. So let's get down to punching out some cardboard. <laughs> So we've got all of our cardboard and components and tokens all punched out. Let's have a look at them, starting of course with the dungeon tiles. This game is slightly different to the previous versions in that there are two unique sets of dungeon tiles. The first being the jungle type style dungeon and then the actual tomb, which is more in line with the previous sets we have this actual dungeon style um, tile I like quite like the whole jungle style tile that's very really different one thing to note though as well as on the back of the cards is that the D&D logo is different to the previous version so if you are combining all the games together as the games are compatible you might want to consider sleeving your cards to add that random element in because I use the monster deck across all three cards for campaigns that have been bought custom campaigns. Of course you can't do it with the dungeon jungle tiles but those are fairly unique to the actual setting. Then there are these door type tiles or door type stand-ups if you want to call it. This looks like an interest to Tomb of Annihilation. Quite nice throwback to the Tomb of Horrors, which had a similar setup. Um, then we've got, which I'm assuming is the starting tiles. Again, if you look at these tiles, as well as this one over here, you'll see that they are, they've definitely gone a step further with the actual, um, the actual tile itself, and the detail on it is actually quite cool. We have these special tokens on the tile which are trap tokens which we'll get to in a second you'll see them over there although not all traps are generally a bad thing some of them say safe some of them say arrow spear trap and then one of the few of them actually say draw I'm not quite sure what that means but we'll get to it we also have the usual HP tokens monster damage tokens some of these spells and ward tokens um, Coming back to the dungeon tiles, yes, quite really, really impressive artwork, even on the actual tomb style uh, tiles as well. Some fantastic artwork. I think it's probably the best dungeon tiles we've seen in the series so far. Let's have a look at some of these other tokens over here. These tokens, uh, the green, the purple and the blue, are unique to a specific area. So this game has also got an element of travel inside of it which is new to the Dungeons and Dragons board game so you'll be moving from one place to another. And the healing surges including this Nanny Poo Poo's healing surge which I'm assuming is an additional healing surge which can be purchased through one of the campaigns or gained through one of the campaigns. Lots of gold tokens at the back because yes what's a jungle without some gold. We have this advantage and disadvantage tokens which if I look at the definition for it, um, advantage lets you take the higher result of a dice roll and disadvantage the lower result, uh, similar to um, what we had with the mobility um, and the dazed effect, immobilized effect and poisoned effect of the previous game. So in this one it's advantage and disadvantage which kind of reminds me of the checks you do when you actually play the RPG version of the game. Then there are some stun tokens. There are tokens that are unique to I'm assuming specific characters. Wand of Wonder, Fire Shield, Acid Arrow, or possibly specific campaigns, mushrooms and webs. Um, let's quickly have a look at the actual character cards themselves. So for our ranger we have Artist Kimber. Uh, really cool is that he gets to that 
ring of winter powers that we saw earlier is that he gets two additional daily powers and as we all know daily powers are the most powerful abilities within the game so he gets two additional daily powers which makes him quite a useful ranger pretty powerful we have a tabaxi bard called birdsong and he says when you enter a square containing a trap we do not trigger a trap oh also really cool considering that this game is going to be full of traps we have kawasha the druid um, okay he's got a little ally that can attack for him and then from the card stack that i've seen he also has transformation ability so he can transform into a panther a crocodile i think it is and a gorilla or ape, ape form and there are tokens for those which you can use um there's our sordial paladin and the last one is our wizard who has probably the most unique innate ability is that he can spend two movement points to move one tiles with a speed of six that allows him to move through three tiles in one turn which is quite powerful um, and of course the monster cards as well I'm not going to go through all of these but uh, all in all um, quite an impressive set of tokens and yeah really really chuffed by the set well that's my review I've got everything all neatly boxed up and my components packed away I'm looking forward to playing through the campaign and the game and I will post my review on my blog shortly once I've played through some of these campaigns of course we are finishing off an existing campaign so but do stay tuned I'll have more for you once we play through the actual Tomb of Annihilation campaign that's all for now ciao